Hello, everybody. It's Brian Tang, President at Fundamental Research Corp. Today, in our uh, next video in our Expert Network series, I'm joined by Sid Rajiv, our Head of Research, as well as Yuen Downey. Yuen is the President and CEO of Premier Gold, uh, listed on the TSX uh, Stock Exchange. They're a gold producer with assets in Nevada and Mexico. So we're going to be talking to both gentlemen today about gold, the gold market, um, and what the expectation is for the commodity in this type of environment. So gentlemen, hello. Hi, Brian. Sid, let's start with you. Um, what is the historical role of gold uh, during turbulent times and what has been the performance? For sure, Brian. So gold among all the mainstream commodities have been one of the best performers, especially in the last two recessions, post the last two recessions. For example, gold uh, was tripled from 2001 to 2008, from $300 to $900 an ounce. And in 2008, it went down 25%. And then after uh, the recession, so post late 2008 to 2011, gold went up another 150%. Now, the, the common theme with the events at that time and right now are two things. One is the extremely low interest rates. And number two is the expected increase in money supply from the recent uh, huge $2.2 trillion stimulus package announced by the U.S. government. Now, we keep a track of the M2 money supply growth. So M2 money supply is basically all the cash and all the liquid instruments. So historically, M2 supply growth and gold has had mixed relationship in the past uh, over the long term. But over the last 15 years, they've had very positive relationship. For example, the M2 supply growth went up or increased significantly from 05 to 08, 2010 to 2012, and 2018 onwards. Now, these are the scenarios where gold also performed extremely well. So we believe that the low interest rates and the stimulus package would result in an increase in money supply, and that would create a conducive environment for gold to perform well in the near term. So we wouldn't be surprised if gold continues its momentum and maybe even hit its uh, all-time record of $1,900 an ounce. But for the long term, to be conservative and to value uh, gold producers and juniors, we use a long-term gold price forecast of uh, $1,500 an ounce. Okay, and so for investors that want exposure to the sector, you feel that producers uh, is one of the best ways to gain that, that type of exposure. Why do you feel this way? And what are you seeing in terms of valuations in the sector right now? That's right. So, you know, you got to keep in mind that uh, the benefit of metal producers is that, you know, by pushing out production by three or six months or completely stopping production, the net present value of their assets are not declining much. And that's because the original asset base or the resource base is still the same. So by pushing out cash flows for six months, the, it, there's minimal impact on the net present value and the valuations should not change much. So, and so that's the general case of the metal producers. But within the metals, uh, only gold has performed well in the last you know, year. Gold is up 30% year over year versus copper is down 25%, zinc is down 40%. So gold is the only metal that's performed. Now, if you look at production disruption, let's say three months of complete production disruption by a producer, that would result in a 25% decline, decline in revenues just based on production. But the higher gold price environment pretty much offsets most of the production loss. So we think gold is probably the only commodity that's probably uh, can offset a loss of the a loss of the, uh, a lot of the disruption that's uh, that's being caused by the current environment. And um, in terms of valuations, there are a number of metrics we use, but uh, I can point out two metrics. Uh, one is the enterprise value to EBITDA, which is currently at 5.5 times EBITDA, uh, 5.5 times for producers. The last three-year average is nine times. Another metric we like is the enterprise value to annual gold production which is now at $3,200 an ounce, and the past three year average is $4,500 an ounce. And gold price is currently at higher levels than the past three years. So clearly the valuation metrics suggest that gold producers, fundamentally strong gold producers, have to perform well in the next uh, few months. 
So basically, the gold price has increased, but the market uh, valuation has not, and you feel that there's some room for it to catch up. 100%. Okay, let's switch now to you, Ewan. Um, you have production in uh, Nevada and Mexico, and uh, as I understand, your production in Mexico has been shut down due to the coronavirus. Could you talk a little bit about the situation in both jurisdictions? Uh, well, I, I, I'd say right now is kind of an unprecedented environment that we're, we, we've entered with essentially across the world shutdown. And not only has that shutdown gone to offices, it's now gone to many producers uh, producing assets. So we're one of the companies that has been affected by the shutdown in Mexico. Mexico has essentially stopped all mining. And uh, so our Mercedes operation which is still an, an operation that we have that's undergoing some transitions from some lower grade ore to higher grade ore. So we could benefit actually from the, a bit of shutdown down in Mexico. Uh, but we also have a, a producing asset that's in partnership with Nevada Gold Mines. That's a joint venture between Barrick and Newmont in Nevada and the Nevada operation is still going. It's a, a good solid low, low cost asset for our company. So as we speak, we have production um, shut down of one of our assets, but we're, we're anticipating it not to be a long-term shutdown. And one of the things, uh, speaking to what Sid said earlier, um, there is, with all these shutdowns in, in mines around the world, it could result in a bit of a shortage for metals if it's a, a longer-term. And I think right now, physical gold is, is getting near impossible to get your hands on with big delays. And if you were to buy a gold coin from the U.S. Mint, the price is, I think, is four or five hundred dollars an ounce more than the spot price. So there's a big good disconnect, and that's probably a result of very tightening supply. Has the government in Mexico gave any indication to you as to when you might be able to resume production? Uh, well, the the decree that was uh, put out in Mexico is for one month. So for the month of April, we expect to be shut down. There's Obviously, critical things at the site are still going on. We didn't have to just abandon the site, uh, security, uh, keeping up pumps, et cetera. Uh, but it, it, it allows uh, our team, now that they'll have to re work remotely, we'll, it's a good chance for us to sort of retool and rethink what we're going to be doing without that pressure of everyday uh, production. Uh, I would expect a month, um, uh, hopefully not longer, and I know many companies in Mexico, including ourselves, are lobbying for some of the critical items in terms of development to be allowed to continue. And I, I'm optimistic if it went beyond one month that that would be something that would start to be allowed because m mining in Mexico is uh, critical for their economy. So I, I don't see uh, the government in Mexico wanting a long-term shutdown of their mining operations. And how fast? Uh, let's say today they said, okay, the order is lifted. How fast could you resume? I think by the time you get full, your camp fully stocked with uh, supplies, people, and resuming the operations, probably a two, two to four week delay from when we're allowed to restart on a full-time basis to, to um, when we resume full-time operations. Uh, we have been prior to the end of the quarter, we were already scaling back production. So there was some indications and uh, already some notes put out by the government to, uh, to put in measures to comply with um, social distancing, et cetera. So it was impacting probably all operations throughout the month of March anyway. Okay, that's great. And in terms of the glo global macro picture, um, Sid gave us some insights. What are, what are you seeing in terms of gold price? Where do you see it going? Um, and how does this differ than 2008? I know that your company was started around that time. So why don't you give us some insight on the macro picture? Um, I, th I think the fundamentals are, have never been better uh, for, for our commodity. The, the fact that across the world we're seeing economic shutdowns 
to come out of this, even when people are allowed to go back to work, it's going to take a significant amount of time. There's uh, when businesses restart, such as travel, restaurants, et cetera, I don't think people are going to be just flooding back to trips. So there's going to be a pretty uh, long-term effect behind this global shutdown of an economy that is going to likely see continued easing in terms of money. And unlike paper money, which it can be printed, and governments can just say, wow, we'll put $2 trillion out there. Uh, gold is a currency that, that has really no political attachment and doesn't have a printing press. So it, it is a, a, a unique currency. It was the first currency, and in my opinion, is going to be the last currency. So I think that the fundamentally, it's, it's never been better for gold, and I, I see a strengthening of the gold price uh, continuing. In terms of Canadian dollars, when you look at exchange ratios, despite What's going on, the flood to the US dollars has led to all time highs in terms of gold prices and other currencies occurring, which doesn't get a lot of airtime, but it, that's, that's one of the realities. So yeah, I think that the, the setting is perfect for the, the gold sector, and we should be uh, one of the companies that will profit from that given our uh, gold endowment of, if you look in all categories, uh, globally we have over 13 million ounces of gold. And Sid, you cover Premier. Um, why don't you talk a bit about your valuation and your analysis on the company? Yeah, so Premier currently, uh, the volatility in share price is so high every day. I, I'm not sure exactly what Premier is trading at today. I think it's $1.50. Our fair hmm. value on the company is $2.99 per share. And that's based on individually valuing all of the key assets that it has. So, Mercedes mine, which is in Mexico, and the South Arturo mine in the US. Uh, but the flagship asset is a non-producing advanced stage project in Ontario, which Premier has now put a bid um, to buy 50% of the equity owned by, on, on the project owned by Centera Gold. So they are waiting on that. So I think uh, in addition to the production aspect of Premier, they also have a lot of things on the go in terms of advancing its other assets. So, you know, so among the gold, you know, producers and explorers in the play, uh, this is an aspect why I like Premier is because it's also get, it's exposes investors to the producing aspect plus also the exploration side of things. But you and me, if I may ask, um, you know, further to what Brian was asking, obviously we talked about the production, but uh, how about exploration and um, other things that you're doing on your other projects? Is that um, are you cutting down uh, or are things going the same? Uh, in Ontario, we were started just started up an exploration program in the Red Lake camp at our our Hasaga project. We have, um, like in Mexico, the the exploration there has shut down. But uh, budget wise, we haven't changed what we expect our budget to be. Uh, like you said, we have the two producing assets, but behind that, in some of the best jurisdictions, I think you'll find anywhere in the world. We have permitted projects that can be developed. Many of those we could start development tomorrow if we wanted to. So we're, I think, in an enviable position that not only do we have production, but we have a portfolio of assets that we will advance. And we expect significant exploration programs to be carried out in Nevada, in Mexico, and Canada this year. And as I said earlier, we have a, a very strong balance sheet, so we're in a good position to continue to build our business through these trying times. Yeah, that helps. But uh, one more thing, I, I'm assuming you're buying now, uh, investing in gold stories, which outside premier, which other producer or major do you like? Uh, I, I like uh, I like what Taranga has done. Taranga has been a company that's uh, successfully grown their production through an acquisition with Barrick. So very similar to our strategy, most of our projects have been acquired through acquisition. I like that strategy of, of growing their business. And with the new assets, they'll be a pretty significant producer and cash flow generator going forward. I've always, um, amongst the larger producers, I think uh, Mark Bristol has done a, a great job coming into Barrick and really changing the company uh, internally as well as externally uh, the view and 
I think in terms of uh, producing companies, we have a, a relationship with them through our joint venture at South Arturo, but a real class act partner to work with. So those are two of the producers I like. And on the smaller side, I, I think that uh, companies like uh, newer producers, like um, uh, assets like Silvercrest has a, a quality asset in Mexico that that should be developed in the future. and and uh, they, they'll, they will be one of the up and comers in our business. Yeah. Okay, gentlemen, um, thank you for joining us today and uh, wish you all the best and hopefully we'll get out of this soon and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you very much.